What's good and what's up guys, it's 2J here, it's more, let's play The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess in the last episode. We saved Colin from King Boblin and Lord Bobo, I think I'm saying that one correct, uh, and we made it here to Goron Village to earn the trust of Gorkoron. And so in this episode, we're going to go ahead and head into the second dungeon of the game. <laughs> Allow me to welcome you to the Goron Mines, the second dungeon of the game. Now this dungeon, just from the first room, might look threatening, and if you don't play your cards right, it can be kind of threatening, like uh, miss time jumps and stuff, because if you fall in lava right there, you will take a good two hearts of damage, so you might want to try and stay out of lava. That, in fact, is kind of a gruesome scene uh, if you fall in there, so keep that in mind. Over here, we have these uh, wooden little panels that you want to break, and we have this pillar of lava that you see you can't get past. Uh, we have the switch right here, so if you put your iron boots, the uh, pillar will turn off momentarily, so you have to run as fast as you can. Don't worry, they give you plenty of time. So for this one up here, you want to maybe run ahead and take a look to see. Because it might be a little confusing if you don't know what you're doing first time through. You want to run straight forward and you want to veer off to the left real quick. And you have this guy right here. Shield attack is awesome. Like that. Let's go ahead and climb with the ladder like so. Now I will say this is actually like my third time recording this dungeon. Because I just haven't been happy with the commentary so... Hopefully this time actually goes well, and his chest is 20 rupees, yep. So, if I'm like stuttering or uh, going back on my word stuff, that's why I've already recorded this dungeon like two or three times already. Now, right here I would recommend you take this guy out. You can actually finish these guys, like so. Ow. You want to be careful, wait for him to do that, and finish! And. Let's see if I can actually show it off, because I have yet to do it. Uh, if you ever do one, like, the hidden skill or something, let him... If you do it fast enough, Link will... Oh, he didn't do it. Uh, depends on certain enemies, but if you do a uh, hidden skill fast enough, Link will actually sheath his sword, and it looks really cool. So for this one, you gotta just do a mad dash, take out all the enemies beforehand, so you can just run straight forward and make a play time spare. So over here you want to jump on here and put the iron boots on to open the door. So it's easy enough stuff, I mean it's the second dungeon, they're not going to make it like super difficult right away. And already past the first room, we're in the central hub of the temple. We'll worry about that crane just a little bit later. For now, we want to go to the right, and there's a chest over here we want to grab. But first, we have some Boblins, Booklins, Bokoblins, people. Yeah. Finish him, and take him out. Yeah! Let's see. Give me the heart. Give me this rupee, and in this chest we have a small key. I like that. It unlocks the door, but only in this area. It's like, yes, because I want to take this one key out of the dungeon. I mean, keys are made for like one set. Why am I going on a rant about keys? I'm weird. So over there you can see the door. That I'm pretty sure that's where the keys are going to go. And right here you want to take your time. If you're fast enough, I'm sure you can run all the way across in like uh, one cycle, but I usually just wait, just be safe. So let's see, I know in this room we're going to be introduced to a, a familiar enemy to Zelda series. Yep, right there. We have the Twilight Princess version of the Dudongos. Uh, something interesting about these guys is um, in Ocarina of Time and Dora's Mask, the L targeting will only be on the head. In this game, uh, the L targeting is both the head and the tail, and they don't blow up either. So that's an interesting thing, because in like all the other Zelda games, the Dudongos will explode. In this game, they will not. So I'm going to take you out. 
Wow, two spin attacks kills him instantly. So that's good uh, detail. Now this room has an interesting way. Uh, the the way we're supposed to go is blocked off, and we have this guy to worry about, so we'll kill him. Yeah, three there are two spin attacks and we'll kill them instantly. So if, on on this room, what you want to do? You want to pull this stone pillar, which I don't know how Link is strong enough to pull this pillar. I mean, that thing's got to weigh at least a ton, if not two tons. Now, what you want to do is put your iron boots on so you can just hold it in place like so. And with that grating, you want to watch to see when the pillars go down. As soon as they go down, run forward. And you can see that you can run and have plenty of time to spare. So something you can do with the iron boots is if you put them on, you can sink down into the water. And with the switch over here, if we activate it, it's a magnetic force that pulls us up. So it's pretty cool. I know in one of the recording sessions, I went on like a weird magnetized rant that I'm not going to go on this time because it was stupid. But here we have what appears to be the first of the Goron Elders besides Gorgoron. Ah. I thought I felt a presence, but what a surprise to find a young human. Word has come to me of you, and if Gorkoron has uh, faith in you, then your heart must be true. I am one to four Goron elders. Goromato uh, Amato is my name. You are heroic, young human. Please, you must lend this tribe your power. And you get a kitty shard. You need all three shards to return the big key to its original shape. That is one of the key shards that, when merged together, form the key to the room where Darboss is being held. He is our patriarch. The key is split into three pieces. Each of us elders keep a, keeps a piece. You must hurry to the other elders. Yes, sir. I believe in this just is just either the compass, the map, or reviews. I want to the map. Yep, it is the dungeon map. So now we get few rooms that we've been in and rooms we haven't been in. And in this, I think it's just like a yellow ruby or something. Oh, red rupee. I knew it was a rupee. Um, I know in all the Goron rooms, there are at least... No, there's a chest in it that has a rupee in it. So let's see, going up. You probably already heard a um, sound coming from up here. And we'll see a familiar face. Let's see if I can line this up. Because so you can actually uh, break the jar. Okay, yeah, you can break that jar, but I'm talking about like this one right here. And through. There you go. Alright, okay. What's up? Phew! Free at last! Gracious! You're that nice fellow who helped me out the other day. How nice to see you again. Well, now that we've found each other again, let's stay together for a bit, hmm? I'll be right with you, so if you want to warp out, just let me know. And we reunited with Uku! This character will let you out whenever- yay! Alright, so let's just go ahead and continue going through the dungeon. We're now on the upper portion of that previous room. Uh, this dungeon will do is make you kind of like backtrack to uh, different rooms, but you go through different portions, so it's, it's nice like that. Just go ahead and kill these. What are these called? Like slugmas? No, wait, I think slugma is actually a Pokemon. Ow. I don't. I'm just gonna call it a slugma. If someone could correct me, I could feel a few. So, this is what I was talking about with the backtracking, but not in the same way. That's the room where we had the lava pillars, but we'll be traveling on the roof. How are we traveling on the roof? By the switch, of course. Now, that door over there is the main objective. However, there's something over to the right. No, to the left. It's the right and the uh, Wii version. There's something over here we want to pick up. We can go Slugma. And if you notice, there's a chest right there. It's a pretty, it's a pretty fancy looking chest. We'll see walking over to it. And drop. Go ahead and open the chest to find your first piece of heart of the dungeon. So we only have three more to go, but we only have one more to go in this dungeon. I want to say every dungeon has at least two pieces of heart. I'm checking my memories to see. I believe that's correct. So now we have to go pull my map out all the way to the other side of this room. And let's see how I can do that without speeding it up. Uh, 
there anything I want to talk about? Nah, we're just gonna go ahead and probably speed it up. Unless I can find something interesting to talk about. Mm -hmm. no, speed it up. So now we're over here, let's see. Few more steps and we'll be able to venture forward and now awesome Ooh. imagine dropping that close to a uh, lantern candle stick thing so we're back in the central hub and you'll notice that over there is where we first entered we have more uh, of with these book ones yeah cuz I think book goblins are like the goblin looking dudes but yeah over there is where we uh, enter the room somewhere the, yeah the doors were there so we have these guys to deal with. You know what? Just jump attack. And then finish! Stabs you to the foot! So what you can do with shield attack is you can actually just like stun enemies with it. Just continues to use it. Attack them. Shoot. Ooh, I stabbed them in the neck. Yeah, there we go. Sling! And then spin attack. There we go. Finish! And whoosh. I will uh, say something though. When you're shooting your sword like that, uh, if an enemy hits you, you have like no way to defend yourself. So be careful when you do that. By pressing that switch, activates the crane. So if you ever need to, like, let's say you're playing this, and you need to leave mid dungeon. Uh, you can just go ahead. The door is over. The Wait, hold on. I thought I saw enemies down there. But the door is down there, so you can just come back up here. It's a nice little uh, way to get back and forth, plus it helps you proceed through the dungeon, so... That's a good way to, um, it's a good thing to keep in mind. Spin attack. Finish him. Kill the keys. Alright, so now we have another switch to step one, but first we gotta grab that ruby. Get out your keys. And we activate that crane. So now we can go forth through the dungeon. What's that on the green? Uh, kill him. Sling. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't mention that. Oh, uh, so we have Blue Ruby right here. It's worth five guys. <laughs> five guys. Has anyone ever eaten at Five Guys? I went there before and I remember the first time I went to Five Guys, they give you like a giant bag of french fries. But like at first we thought, you know, it was just a, uh, uh, here we have a uh, tech tights before I get back to my story. But like, no, my mom and I um, got like uh, two bags of uh, the french fries we got like just tiny little ones, like say Burger King or something gives you. Well, people are like, are you sure you want a big bag of fries? They're like, are you sure you want two order fries? Like, yeah. We get there and like we were at uh, Washington DC for like a week during spring break. But like we literally ate on the bag for uh, the whole entire week. Cause they give you so much french fries. But anyways in that chest we had a uh, small key so we're gonna need that in a few moments. Go ahead and place this crate over here and come back up. And now we can kinda do something that's a little uh Another thing about it, it's kind of pointless, but um, I guess it's cool in a way. So activating that switch activates the magnetism, which we can just use to get up here. And let's see. You can see the crystal switch over there, so we'll be hitting that soon. Right over here, and we have another switch. Now, I don't understand how this works. That gets activated, however, the switch we were just on doesn't appear to be connected to anything. Are there like wires or something going through? Or is it just like some kind of magic? I don't know. I'm making sense of a video game. Jump! Oh, I thought I was going uh, to like plop to water because I was a little off. So, what I was saying about like all this being kind of pointless is... Let me drop down right here. There's a chest right here, which if you want to come over here and grab it, I think it's only just like 20 rupees. Yeah. That was a lucky guess. 
But the switch right here, you can easily just like slingshot uh, with over there. So jump over here. I love doing that where you have Link jumping in cutscenes. Go ahead and go inside. And we have more of these guys. Also, those giant things over there, those are Beemos. They've been in Zelda games. Uh, what was the first Zelda game they uh, been in? I know they. My memory of them goes as far back as the Link's Pass, because I've. I've played the original Zelda game and Adventure Link, but I've never beaten them. I, I'm ashamed to say, but I keep dying in the first Zelda game, and I'm like in the first dungeon. I am god awful at like uh, some older games. I don't know, I'm more like with 3D games. But this chest we have the second piece of Heart of Dungeon, so now you were pretty much done with collectibles, unless you want to get like the rest of uh, the chest and stuff that's in here. But I will probably not be picking up the chest because they're mainly like rupees and stuff. And you can get that throughout like the overworld and stuff. Plus it's a later in the game there's a good part uh, or there's a good place to just get rupees, so I'm not gonna worry about it. So I'm gonna cut this rope right here to lower the bridge. Now let's say over here in these face are just like rupees, yeah. So let's say you want to drop down. Ooh, what an interesting job. And let's go ahead and open the door. So in this room, do you want to keep this room in mind, actually? We have some archers shooting at us. Which, I guess if they have, like, good enough vision, they can see us opening the door, but that... I mean, they're just, like, firing arrows, just to fire arrows. Probably. But when you get close enough, they'll actually, like, see you and start shooting at you. Like, watch. See, now they're actually aiming towards us. But you want to veer off over here, uh, not mess with that Beemos. And in this chest, that's the thing about this uh, dungeon. We have a small key, but in all the other chests that we've uh, got small keys in, they were the big, massive ones, and it's just like the little ruby chest, so. Uh, I guess it did that just to kind of throw you off, but that's kind of a mean little trick to do. But, anyways, we're pretty much done with this room for now, so go ahead and just come over here and open this door. And, uh, we got some time. Let's go ahead and run over here. Now, this bridge right here, I want to see if I could do it. I've done it before, but you can actually just run all the way. Oops. Nah, I'm not going to do it. I want to wait. But you can actually run all the way across the bridge. Uh, I don't want to do that one. Flip back over. And let's see if I could do it. Just run all the way across. Whew, there we go. I did a little bit more uh, gracious before, but still got me across. Oh, this guy. I like this one. It's probably my favorite of the uh, four elders. Ah, ah, the young human. I am pleased to see you made this far, brother. I am one of uh, the four elders of the Goron tribe. I am called Gor... Is... What? Iba... My... Whatever. Ibiza. You have heard of the plight of our patriarch, otherwise you would not have come to see me. Here, take this, brother! And we get the second key shard. We'll need one more. Now, there's one more shard. But seeing you has uh, reminded me of the dangers that lie or that line the uh, path to it. It is something that may help you. A weapon said to have been left in, these, in his mind by a hero of old. It is beyond price, and so we have protected it through generations. Now, when our tribe balance or tribe balances, uh, what? Now, when our tribe balances on the brink of ruin, it could aid in our salvation. The hero's weapon is stored safely up ahead. Talk to the guard and get it, uh, or take it with you with the blessings of the Gorons. All right. So we over over here have a ruby chest. Twenty rupees? No, ten rupees. Oh, they throw you off. They did like the continuous 20 rupee trend. It's like, you know what? No, you, you don't get 20 rupees. Sneaky. Also, I just hit the microphone, so that'd be interesting to see how that plays out. Alright, so now we just want to go ahead and run to the door over here and make our way towards that guard to keep the weapon. So let's see. We want to go ahead and just go this way. Boom, 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 boom. 
I still don't know how easily Link could just uh, walk there, but then again, he pulled that giant wall, so it seems like he could do anything. I want to drop off right here, because it will actually put you right next to the chest. And you get 10 rupees. Alright, but I think that's going to end it for this episode. Next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. We'll go ahead and go through this door, and we'll go talk to the guard and see if we can get that weapon of the hero of old. Or a hero of old. Whatever. But I will see you all next time.